Swamp Life Reptiles, where conservation, captive breeding, and stewardship come together through education. What's going on, Swamp Squad? We're back with another video. But today's video is a little different. It's an unplanned video. See, I woke up this morning planning to go look for uh, my daughter, Scout Elf, her elf on the shelf. And as I walk into my kitchen dining room area, I look on the ground and there was a puddle of water. My aquarium was leaking. I didn't know if it was the filters. I didn't know if it was the aquarium. I didn't know what it was. So I quickly had to take everything apart at eight o'clock in the morning and it's cold outside and figure out what the issue was. Here you can see my 55 gallon aquarium and it is leaking. When my wife helped me carry it out after digging out all the sand, gravel, rocks, taking out the filters, I had two Fluval 407s on it, the plants, the rocks, all of this, we figured out that it was in fact leaking on this side of the aquarium on the bottom, which is where I suspected because there was water dripping down the stand. And that's usually a telltale sign that it's the aquarium and not the filter. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to reseal an aquarium. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to continue using this aquarium because I had plans to upgrade to a 75 gallon aquarium uh, for the turtle that's inside. Um, but I am going to show you how to reseal it uh, in case I decide to sell this aquarium uh, in particular. So buckle up and uh, get ready for a long fun day. Uh, we'll see you in a few. All right, so, so far I've rinsed out all the gunk from uh, the aquarium. Now I'm gonna use paper towels to wipe down the other stuff and then use the razor blade as I'll show you to get the rubber ceiling um, out of the aquarium. I have to reseal uh, this aquarium. All right, so we're gonna start with the paper towels and then we'll switch to the razor blade. I'm gonna use the paper towels to get all this stuff off the glass, especially around the bottom where we're resealing it. I can already see where the air bubble was. Now, technically, I don't really have to clean all of the glass um, but while I'm here, I like to. That way, when it's resealed, I don't have to clean it. I'm gonna get in there, get all of this stuff. As you can see guys, all this disgusting stuff is all over the glass. And that is the stuff that I'm working. All right, now that I've gotten the gunk off the glass, I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna take it down the lines of the silicone ceiling. But well, there wasn't hardly any silicone here. Actually, I'm gonna go up it. It's a lot easier to start at the bottom and go up it. A 
essentially you're taking away its ability to hold water okay and then you'll just run your fingernail and peel off the silicone like this some people use a screwdriver uh, I prefer not to I have a shop vac so I'm gonna leave the silicone in the bottom of the aquarium You want to make it as clean as possible. Because remember, you're going to be putting new silicone. All right, it doesn't really take that long. It's just about being patient and getting it as clean and crisp as possible, guys. All right, what's going on, guys? Uh, I'm at Home Depot, had to grab some silicone. Um, the silicone I'm grabbing is the Loctite Clear Silicone, 100%. And as you can see here, it says it's safe for aquariums. Uh, I've used it a lot. It's really good, uh, and it lasts a long time if you do it correctly. Uh, something else you wanna make sure you have is some painter's tape, all right? I have painter's tape at home, so I don't need to grab any, uh, but we're gonna be using painter's tape and the silicone, all right? This silicone is $4.57. I'm getting two packs to make sure I have enough. And uh, we'll see you in a few minutes, guys. So what's going on, guys? So I haven't fully finished cleaning out the silicone from the aquarium. I gotta get my shop vac and uh, suck everything out. Um, but I am going to make a breakfast run for the family, getting some Waffle House. And Waffle House is right by Home Depot. So I'm gonna run into Home Depot and grab some silicone. All right, guys, so I'll see you in a second from Home Depot. All right, got my silicone, got my breakfast from Waffle House. About to go take care of business at the house. All right, so we got all the silicone out. Just got back from Home Depot. Uh, most of it is up. I'm gonna use my shop vac here. I'm gonna suck all the stuff up, clean it up so I can see if there's any more silicone that I need to get out. All right. All right guys, so I've sucked up most of the silicone. Now I'm just going back through to clean up some of the lasting remnants and residue. You want it to be as clean from silicone as possible. You want the silicone to stick directly to the glass. Directly to the glass, all right? 
So I found some remnants that I'm scraping up. It was cold, so I had to go put it back on my jacket. That's pretty clean right there. Oh, no, some stuff right there. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna use the painter's tape and I'm simply just gonna outline, uh, kind of like you do when you're protecting, I'm putting the tape where I don't want uh, the silicone, also to keep it as straight lines, so I want it as neat as possible. So yeah, I'll show you in just a second when I'm done. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm siliconing, or not siliconing, taping rather, um, the seams when I get finished. I'll show you a final product. Still got about a third of the way left to go. I am done taping. As you can see here. Oh, that's not that straight, but it's okay. Here. And that's just so when I put the silicone down, it'll make neatish straight lines. I don't uh, tape the top part up in here. Um, because I'm just gonna put silicone there and run my finger. I don't care how that looks All right now I gotta get the shop vac and suck out the dirt and then we'll get started with the silicone All right, so I got the silicone uh, I had to cut the tip with a pair of scissors and I took my jacket off because silicone is really sticky on your hands and uh, I don't want to worry about getting it on my Under Armour jacket All right so now when you're using the silicone, what I'm going to end up doing is spraying it down the line and then running my finger. Okay. I normally start at the top and go down because the clump I want down there. So let's see. Going down. And I'm gonna run one more layer. All right, and now I run my finger like this. Straight down to smooth it. Ooh, it's chilly. All right, and I'm gonna do that on every scene. All right. I finished siliconing the seams. Uh, something that I would recommend, wear gloves because my hands, I've washed them seven times. I've used acetone, I've used nail polish remover, I've used alcohol, and the silicone is pretty tough to get off your hands. It's still not completely gone. So I would wear uh, latex gloves or something. Um, and now it's the waiting game. I'm gonna put this out in the sun so it'll dry and uh, when it's done, we'll water test it and see if it works. You want to let the silicone cure for about 24 hours. So I'm going to put it actually outside for a bunch of hours. Um, and then tonight I'll put it on the porch in case it rains tonight. Um, but it's going to stay outside. It is winter, so it is going to take a little bit longer. I'll probably let it cure for like 36 hours or so. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take care of it. The washcloth and rubbing alcohol when i was using alcohol the first time i was using a paper towel and that didn't work um so i googled it and it said to use a coarse washcloth um, and it definitely worked so i'm sure the acetone would have worked had i been using a washcloth Whew, this stuff is sticky guys so uh make sure you have some rubbing alcohol and a washcloth so you can get it done i'm still finishing up my hands and uh, oh there's my little helper Makeup guy. Yep, she has on makeup. She's been doing makeup while daddy's been trying to fix the aquarium. And Alright guys, it has been 24 hours and we're back. And now I'm gonna peel off the tape and water test the aquarium. Uh, when you peel off the tape, you want to be very gentle. You don't want to rip it off smooth because you don't want to rip off the silicone as well. Alright, so Thank you. 
See how I'm going nice and slow? Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and do the other sides. And then I'll show you what the finished product looks like. All right guys, so what we're about to do is before we water test it, I'm gonna use the shop vac, suck out all the last minute remnants that may have gotten in there. And then we're gonna water test it. So let's go ahead. <laughs> All right guys, so let's go ahead and water test it. I'm gonna add water to the aquarium and see if it holds water. So let's go ahead guys. All right, so we're adding water now. I'm gonna fill it up decently high just to make sure that it's not leaking. Um, and we should be able to tell relatively quickly whether or not the aquarium is leaking. All right guys. I've almost completely filled it up now. I threw in a piece of driftwood because I'm going to change up her tank a little bit. Um, experimenting with some different pieces of wood. And so I wanted to see what it would look like. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clean out the filters that were on her tank. Uh, while I check to see if this tank holds with this amount of water. This is about the amount that I would have in the tank anyways. All right, guys, it's been about an hour since I've added water in. Uh, as you know, with daylight savings time, I'm gonna be losing daylight very quickly. And so I'm gonna go ahead and drain the water. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like currently. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start reinstalling it. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm adding water back into the aquarium. I've added sand, I've added the piece of driftwood. Now, I'm hoping that it'll just stick, stay in place. The water will clear up once I run the filter. That's just some residual uh, residue in the sand that's you know coming up. And uh, we'll see how it looks, man. I'm excited. As you can see now, I'm adding in the aquarium heater. Let's hope it works. All right, guys, I've added the rocks, the plants, the heater, and the mercury vapor bulb. I have everything fit in. 
I think I'm gonna leave the water level right here so I can take this water hose outside. And in just a few minutes, when the water temperature gets warmer, I'm gonna add mango back in. All right, guys, one thing I forgot to mention was we need to add the salt. So I have my salt down here. I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt. If you wanna know how much salt to add, just check back on how to make brackish water video. Uh, I'll make sure to link it to the end of this video so you can watch that. Um, but adding salt is pretty simple. I literally just pour cups of salt and wait until it dissolves. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the salt and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. See the rock salt that I poured in, literally just used a red cup. Uh, my red cup is about two cups and I did three of them. So I did about six cups of salt uh, because this is about 60 uh, gallons. It's actually not full. This is a 55 gallon aquarium, but normally I do a cup and a half for every 10 gallons. So we'll wait for the salt to dissolve a little and then I'll add mango in. All right, guys, so we have mango here. We got mommy holding the bucket for me. Cammy's gonna be my special helper and put mango in. We gotta make it nice and quick, Cameron, okay? All right, you know how to grab her shell with two hands on either side. She looks like Ruby. Yep. Two hands. It, come on. Grab her and put her in nice and quick. Set her in. Let go. There you go. Good job. And mango is back into her home. And her chair. In her aquarium? Mm -hmm. Does she look happy? Yeah. Yeah, she looks happy. Mm -hmm.